3.6 billion the deal is reportedly worth. People said that Sony had to respond. Uh, the stock price on other developers it was starting to go up. Remember, people were saying, uh, particularly Capcom, in Japan, Square, they were saying, yeah, Nintendo. They're like, what is Sony going to do next? Who they want to buy? Watch the values go up. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, they had their sights set on Bungie for their retaliation, uh, staying in it. Uh, it's it's got to make you nervous, man, mm -hmm. if you're Sony. Mm -hmm. If uh, you see what's going on with with uh, Microsoft, which is your competitor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to have to make some, make your own acquisition. I think they made a good decision. You're a big Bungie guy? Uh, Destiny, yeah. I never played Destiny, I, but wasn't Bungie involved with... <laughs> Halo? Halo? Yeah. They so were the creators of the first... I think up to the third one. Yeah, so and then three, four, so three took it over. So do you feel like this is kind of? Is it possible that this is kind of like a, a signal that you go for the previous involvement with the game that's now exclusive on the mm. other plat? Like, because we're talking about exclusives, and you, if you recall, uh, the the thing that people cared about when the Activision deal went down, they kept saying, "Well, is COD going to be exclusive now?" Because these right. the exclusive conversations when it comes to the consoles seems to always be the thing to talk about. Like which games are going to be on which platform and then people are either for or against it. You have the fans on either side that say, okay, um, you know, my side's better and I'm going to root for the exclusives that are on this platform. Mm -hmm. And then they do battle in the comment section and so forth. And then you have other people that look at gaming from the bigger picture and say, hey, people are going to miss out on playing good titles because they just don't have the hardware to play it with all the, when this exclusive stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And then to, for everybody to have all these different consoles seems like a, a lot of unnecessary uh, equipment mm -hmm. if these things continue to get siloed off onto each of the two platforms. But it seems like there's no way around it right now. The uh, IP, IP. Yeah, it's all about that nowadays, eh? The IP rating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant the other IP, the yeah. intellectual property, internet protocol. Yeah. Um, okay, so what's this deal? Bungie will continue, scroll up, Bungie will continue to be a multi-platform independent. They always say the same thing, multi-platform. No, it's not going to be exclusive. No, it's, it's not a wrap on that. So they say good things out the gate so that people can't get too upset about it. The president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment said... In a post on the PlayStation blog, Bungie's world-class expertise in multi-platform development and live game services will help us deliver on our vision of expanding PlayStation to hundreds of millions of gamers. That's another little mini shots fired. They're like, yeah, we got hundreds of millions of gamers. Mm -hmm. uh, Bungie's technical expertise coupled with their track record of building highly engaged communities make them a natural fit for collaboration with PlayStation Studios. See, they keep talking about this community building thing because that's money down the road. It's not just money on a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. Like Destiny, you keep paying. Can you keep paying? I think so. I can keep paying. Yeah. Well, you they buy limited stuff. It's like the gym membership in the new year. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Remember? Like everybody... It's an influx of people. They get the membership, and then they get the, they're getting billed forever after that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, all the games need to be ongoing, and they need to be... Um, uh, communities now. That's the thing. And Destiny does that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, here's, here's some questions, some Q&A, courtesy of The Verge. As a Destiny player, does Bungie become part of PlayStation, becoming part of PlayStation, have any immediate impact on how I play and experience Destiny 2? No! Our commitment to Destiny 2 as a multi-platform game with full cross-play remains unchanged. We want you to play the Witch Queen on February 22nd on a platform of your choice. I don't and know then that, anything after that is uh, all PlayStation. Your <laughs> is in all caps in this answering this question. Yeah. So it's very intense. It's almost as intense as me yelling it. Um, of course, I mean, you're going to say this stuff. And look, I'm all for it if they actually do it. 
here's my thing. You got a good game, make it available to as many people as possible. And there's so many new business models that seem to support that happening. Uh, it's just going to be hard when the stakes get elevated if the other platforms do their exclusive things and you're forced to respond or else you can't sell hardware. Because mm -hmm. people will just say, well, I can play any game over here plus these exclusives. And so you get into a sort of arms race, which it appears that we're in right now. Right. Um, I don't, obviously, Bungie not on the same scale as Activision Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's going to be a little bit less pull potential there. Still, uh, you know, something significant here and definitely a response and a reaction to what's going on. And it's something for the Sony fans to celebrate in the presence of the variety of other deals that were happening on the other side. Yeah. Congrats, Sony. I guess you so. You did it. I guess so. So, by the way, De Destiny is the biggest launch they put out in a while. But I guess they, they, they've got this other game coming up. What, what was it called? Do you the know Witch anything? Queen. Do you know anything I don't about know this? anything okay, about right. it. Well, anyway. 